Anything and everything that you create on Microsoft Azure is called an Azure resource. Virtual machines, databases, storage and in fact network all are Azure resources. But do you really understand Azure resource and its relation with resource groups, subscription and management groups? Well, all this and much more coming up in this video. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In today's episode and the connected next episode, we are going to learn how to describe Azure resources and resource groups. This is our section 2.1.4 and then in the section 2.1.5, we will understand how to describe subscriptions. Moving ahead, we have described management groups and this will be our section 2.1.6 and then finally, we will cover the section 2.1.7 which is to describe the hierarchy of resource groups, subscriptions and management groups. And friends, please note that these subsections are under the major section 2, which is describe Azure architecture and services. Very important section from the exam perspective as it alone commands 35 to 40% of the total exam questions. Just to revise a little bit more in the previous part 8, we have already covered section 2.1.1 where we learned about Azure region, regional pair and sovereign regions. Then we also learned about Azure availability zones and Azure data centers, which were the section 2.1.2 and 2.1.3 respectively. And friends, an important piece of information that Microsoft has changed the AZ900 course content on 28th October 2022. Very important for you to know in case you want to fully understand all these changes, please watch this video. The link is right there in the description box. Okay, so all the sections that we are going to cover in this video will make you understand some of the core concepts of Azure. Why it is important? Well, anything and everything, as I said, in Azure is a resource. And I don't think I need more words to emphasize the importance of understanding this Azure core concept. And trust me guys, without understanding these Azure core components, you won't be able to build anything concrete on Microsoft Azure. So first, let's try to get the basics right. And with that, let's begin our learning and start the episode. So let's first understand Azure resources and this is our section 2.1.4. And well, let me start with a quick question. As a user, why would you go to Microsoft Azure? Well, I know with your eyeballs rolling up in surprise, you are going to say, of course, to create things like virtual machines, databases, storage, network and so on. Isn't it? I mean, what kind of question was that? Friends, it is this question answering to which we will get clear answer for a lot of things. So let's try to dissect. You see the storage, the virtual machines, the website and even the databases. All these are and many more are called Azure resources in Microsoft Azure. Okay, so I understand sometimes theories are just not enough. We need some practical and the best place to see actual working on Azure resources is none other than the Microsoft Azure portal itself. Okay, so here I am on the Azure portal. Let's create some resource. Let's go for storage account. And here my friends, you have to click on this plus symbol which says create. And then you will come to this page and here you can create a storage account. There are a lot of options to be filled up like basics, advanced, networking, data protection, encryption, tags and review. So I will keep most of the values as default. Let's try move ahead. So here you can see I have a subscription. I already have a subscription which is called which pay as you go. Then we have this resource group section. I have mentioned many times in my videos that resource group are something that you must supply in order to create any resource on Azure. So here we go. We will create a new resource group. Let's call it which resource and I will say it uh, RG as in resource group. Let's create it. Now let's move ahead and now we have to give the storage account name and here my friend it's important to note that Microsoft says that the name must be unique across all the existing storage account in Azure. 
so it must be unique across the board and it also gives some guidelines on the naming convention so for example it says that the name should be of 3 to 24 character long so let's give it a name so now i have given a name which is called which storage test i will keep the region as default which is east us and if you want to change the region you can click on this drop down menu pick any region that suits you or maybe any region which is close to you or your business or your customers for now i will keep the default value i will go for the standard performance i'm not picking the premium one let's go for the default redundancy value click advance and here also my friends i'm keeping the default values let's move ahead now we are in the networking tab here you can see that the network access now we have selected enable public access from all network basically for production type of application you would not want to select this option but anyways for now this is just the fundamentals so let's keep the default value let's move ahead and go to the data protection tab and here also we will keep the default value moving on to the encryption encryption is a little higher topic so i'm not going to dwell into this for now and let's go to the tag now on this tab you can give the tags tags are basically name and value pairs now let's go to the review section in this review section you can see all the values that you have selected so far and in case there is some error in the values that you have chosen or maybe you have missed to give some mandatory value you will see the error here but for now we don't see any error so let's press the create button and here you can see the initializing deployment is given and now as we are talking we are already deployment in progress so let's wait for a couple of seconds here you go we have our resource ready let's go to the resource and here now friends you can see that we have our storage account created which is named as which storage test here you can see all the values for this storage account you can observe all the other properties that are linked to this storage account okay so what is important here see here we have just created a storage account which is a resource in microsoft azure as a side note just creating the storage account is not of much use unless you create some sort of containers or file share or queues or tables so you can say that these are all type of storages that you can create under the storage account i will probably create another video in which i will cover how to create all these type of storages and what are the exact use cases for each of them but for now it's important that we understand we have created an azure resource which is under a resource group which is called which resource group rg so once again important concept here is that no resource can exist without a resource group friends always keep that in mind you will get some questions around this concept in az 900 exam okay so now you know how to create resources on azure portal but is the azure portal only way to create azure resources or are there any more ways to create resources of course there are besides azure portal we have azure powershell azure cli and azure mobile app and friends one more quick information for you all the resources in azure can be created or represented as json files now the json file means javascript object notation as far as the fundamental course is concerned you don't need to deep dive in json formats but then it's always good to know microsoft can really change the questions very quickly so please understand this question i will show you the json format on the azure portal now so now once again i am in the azure portal we just created a storage account and you can see a lot of options for the storage account for example overview activity logs tags and in this very section come to the bottom of it and you will reach to a section which is called automation in this you have an option which is called export template click on this and here you will find json file for the storage account we just created likewise for any resource that you create in microsoft azure you can find this json file already created for you you can use it for automation or maybe bulk creation of the resources use it to the way you want but for now you know that there is a json file 
and all the resources are represented in JSON format. And friends, in case you want to download this JSON file, you have a download option here. And besides that, if you make some changes in this JSON file, you can redeploy it using this option. Friends, in the introduction section, I mentioned that Microsoft has changed the course content of AZ900. Thus, we are planning to soon launch a new series of questions and answers on AZ900. So please do subscribe to the channel to receive the timely notification of this upcoming series. Now that you understand Azure Resources, let's talk about Azure Resource Group. Simply put, Azure Resource Groups are nothing but a container in which all your resources reside. Think Azure Resource Group as a folder in Windows inside which you store all your other files. And as I showed you in the demo just a while back, each resource in Azure must belong to a resource group. So friends, a resource group is a logical container that associates multiple resources so that you can manage them as a single entity based on the lifecycle and the security. For example, you can create or delete resources as a group if the resources share a similar lifecycle such as the resources for an end tier application. In other words, everything that you create, manage or depreciate together is associated within a resource group. Now friends, let's check out some interesting facts around the resource groups that will help you understand them better. So here comes the first fact. It says that Azure Resource Group is a group of Azure resources. As I just mentioned, Azure Resource Group facilitate you to combine or manage multiple resources together. Then we have the second fact which says a resource group is a logical container that associates multiple resources so that you can manage them as a single entity based on the lifecycle and the security. The third fact says that in single Azure resource group, you can have multiple resources or services like Azure virtual machines, Azure SQL databases, Azure functions, app services, etc. And then it says when you create a resource, you are required to place it in a resource group. As I showed you in the demo, no resource, absolutely no resource can exist without a resource group. Moving ahead, the next fact says that while a resource group can contain multiple resources, a single resource can only be in one resource group at a time. And friends, this one is a very important fact. As you can get a question in AZ900 exam as well, in which Microsoft can ask you whether a resource can reside in multiple resource group at the same time. And now you know this is not true. One resource can only exist in one resource group at any given point of time. You can move the resource from one resource group to another. But remember, I said move. I'm not saying copy. So there cannot be multiple copies of same resource in multiple resource group. And now here comes one more fact that elaborates what I just said that some resources may be moved between resource groups. But when you move a resource to a new resource group, it will no longer be associated with the former group. And friends, remember this very important point that resource group cannot be nested. For example, in case of Windows operating system, you can always create a subfolder inside a main parent folder. But that's not true in case of resource groups. You cannot create multiple resource groups under a parent resource group. So please keep that in mind. There can be questions in AZ900 exam around this concept. Now let's quickly understand the benefits of resource group. The first benefit of a resource group is lifecycle and security. Azure Resource Group facilitates you to manage the resources as a single entity based on lifecycle and security. The next benefit of Resource Group is flexibility. So the Resource Groups gives you a better flexibility to manage the lifecycle of all the services and the resources at one place which are located under one resource group. Then the third benefit of Resource Group is Delete All one of the prominent benefits of resource groups. So friends, please pay attention here. When the life cycle of resources ends and you want to delete all the resources, then you can use Azure Resource Group. For example, let's say that you are building a website called the techblackboard.com. The best practice would be to create all the resource group for this website in a single resource group. 
For example, you may need some storage space to store the images and maybe some videos, a virtual machine if you want to host your website on IIS servers and of course a database to store the website related information and so on and so forth. Now let's suppose that for some reason you don't need this website anymore and you want to shut down this website. In this case, the optimized way to remove all the website related resources would be to remove the resource group itself. In this way, all the resources in the resource group will be automatically deleted in one shot and this eliminates the chances of not deleting any resource by mistake which surely saves you incurring unwanted cost. And friends, soon I will make a practical video on Azure resource group delete all benefit to clearly make you understand as this is the very important benefit and also one of the best practices to learn in Azure when it comes to resource management. So if until now you have not subscribed to the channel, please do it right away. And now comes the fourth benefit. The fourth benefit of Azure resource group is access and permission. So friends, the Azure resource groups provides you a better control to manage security of a group of resources and services such as user access and resource permission. So rather than managing access and permission on resource level, you can manage them more effectively and efficiently on a resource group level. The fifth benefit is connect with other resource group. So every resource in one resource group can be connected to the resources in another resource group. And last but not the least, we have move resources. In Azure, you can move resources from one resource group to another Azure resource group. So friends, these are very important benefits to keep in mind because you will get questions about these benefits in AZ-900 certification exam. So that was all for today. Let's summarize in the section 2.1.4. Today we understood how to describe Azure resources and resource group. And then I told you many interesting facts about the resource groups, which I'm sure would have given you insights that you can use in your daily Azure working. We then deep dive to understand why resource groups are even needed in the first place and then checked out the benefit of Azure resource groups. In the next episodes, we are going to explore concepts like Azure subscription, management group and the hierarchy between Azure resource groups, subscriptions and management group. So friends, if you do not want to miss your Azure learning, please do consider subscribing to the channel and press that bell icon to receive timely notifications. If you think that we are doing a good work, please press that like button and share our videos. It is your likes that helps us grow and motivates us in bringing more such quality content. Please share your feedback on the current content and what more you want to see on the Tech Blackboard channel. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.